good afternoon, more Medic One. Today I've got a, a little Murray Rider on the bench, and uh, the problem is it's got uh, the engine, the crankcase is full of gasoline, and basically when that happens, the uh, the carburetor uh, needle in the seat is not working. As you can tell on some of these lawnmowers, the gas tank is higher than any of the parts on the engine. So what happens is the float inside the carburetor is kind of like the float in a toilet. When the gas won't shut off, the gas will run actually through this PVC tube right here. It'll travel up into there and it'll also travel down the uh, intake pipe down into the intake valve. And if the intake valve is open, the gasoline's just going to uh, travel right down the intake uh, valve guide. Hey cowboy, what you doing? But anyway, um, I'm going to show you how to repair the carburetor. Um, you, nine times out of ten, going to have to replace the needle in the seat or the seat. And a lot of times seat replacements don't get done by a lawnmower technician. And uh, that's part of it. So, might as well do it while you're there, but uh, a lot of times they'll do a pop-off on the carburetor and they'll say, well, it's good, it's good for now, and then they won't do it, and then it comes back within 30 days leaking like a, a leaking faucet. So, I'm going to get the carburetor off. I'm going to show you how to replace the seat in the carburetor, and we'll see how it turns out. Well, the first thing you want to do is unscrew the fuel solenoid from the carburetor. You can use a like a this is an old craftsman wrench that I've actually ground down the head of and uh, it's a half inch or you can use some uh, thin line wrenches from like snap on I think this kit part number is LTA 805k and the wrenches are super thin just undo the fuel solenoid inspect it and make sure it's working good pop the bowl off and look at the bowl make sure there's no rust down in there go ahead and pull put your float pin through Careful not to lose it. Pull your float off with your needle. Pull the gasket off. It's hard and cracked to replace it, which this one is, see there? And it just broke. What I like to do is just thread in coarse wood screw. Just a couple of teeth down in there. You don't have to go real deep. You don't want to spread that out and damage the carburetor. Put you something down in the hole like a cut off bolt that's smaller than the threads just to have something to protect those threads and uh, you're going to use that bolt you just stuck in there for a fulcrum point and uh, basically you have to tighten your carburetor up a little bit in the bias. Should <clears throat> pull it right out of there. How do you like that? pretty cool. Once you get the carburetor kit uh, in, basically what you want to do is open it up and inspect the parts. As you can tell, it don't come with a whole heck of a lot for the money that you pay. But their parts are needed, so it comes with a, if you notice, two different seats right there. You probably can't tell from the video, but <clears throat> the only difference between these are the inlet size. Uh, the needle fits either one, but if it's if your engine has a fuel pump on it, you want to use the seat that has the smaller hole or the orifice. If your engine is gravity flow, you want to use the seat that has the bigger hole, which would be this one. 
Well, yeah, maybe. I'm not gonna try to force it to focus, but the whole size is physically smaller. So we're gonna use this one and we'll install it inside the carburetor. Whoops, and don't drop it <laughs> like I just did. Go ahead and uh, use your uh, installer if you have one. Uh, this one's actually for a Toro, but it works great for Briggs and Stratton carburetors as well. These new seats are uh, tapered. They're a little bit thicker at the top than they are at the bottom. So when you go to put them in, they'll seal good. Just go ahead and press that down as far as you can with your finger. And then uh, just find you a small little hammer. And don't be, you know, too rough with it, but uh, you just want to tap it down until it stops. And you'll feel it. It'll, it'll, it'll just be like tap, 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 and then you'll feel it thud. A little more. And that's it. And it even changes tone. That's all you need to do. We'll get it put back together and we'll do a leak test or a pop off test and we'll see how it turns out. I've had a lot of people say, well, more medic, why don't you just put the fuel inlet to your mouth and suck on it and put your tongue on it? That should be sufficient enough tell you whether the needle and seat's working or not. Yeah, you can do that, but uh, I like to invert the carburetor and apply pressure. I'm gonna let you see that if I can. Everything's hooked up. I'm going to put about 10 pounds of pressure on it. I'm going to show you at the point where it pops off. It pops off about 7 to 8 psi. And it should hold steady right there. And it is. If it'll hold for five minutes, two minutes, uh, you should be good to go. Because if, it, if it'll hold back air, it'll definitely hold back a liquid. So, gauge is holding steady. I consider this carburetor mechanically sound to go back onto the engine. If your needle drops, you've got an issue still with your uh, fuel inlet and seat. So, always replace the seats in the carburetor if you're going to tear it down. It's just an insurance measure. Uh, basically, now it's time to go back onto the tractor with it, and uh, I'll get it cranked up for you so you can see how it runs. without the blower shroud on there but uh, a few minutes won't hurt it but uh, if you have any questions about carburetors on Briggs and Stratton engines or if you're having a problem with one just let me know more medic one y'all have a good day